everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so today we have a small topic that is a continuation of biostatistics that is collection of data and its presentation so regarding data we have already seen uh, the types of data uh, like uh, types of variables and uh, uh, biostatistics the measures of central tendency measures of dispersion and normal curve and uh, various tests of significance so everywhere uh, this data is coming so today's video is about um, the very basic step of any research process that is after the collection of uh, data through various methods like interviews questionnaires and hospital records or any other methods we uh, do for our data collection so the second step is we need to present it in a tabular for form or in a graphical representation so that is an easy way to con convey the message or the convey the data what we get in a very comprehensive manner so today's video is about collection of data and presentation of data it is the first step of any research so let's see how do we collect data collection is commonly done using interviews that is face to face interviews uh, maybe we, we may have uh, questionnaires with us or we ask questions open-ended or closed-ended questions and we can mail the questionnaires uh, postly or via any electronic media or we can give the questionnaires not like interviews interviews like we are one-to-one -one interaction is happening but questionnaires we just give questionnaires and asking the uh, participant to fill it out it can be open-ended and closed-ended so open-ended means uh, the participants have an option to write whatever he feels but closed-end means he has to just tick whatever the option is given he has no other uh, inclusion uh, from his side and we can collect the data from hospital records any other registries any uh, health department registries all the records we can collect so any this is some common example for collection of data but this also uh, may be asked for exam as how do you collect data so you can just uh, elaborate it how interviews are done how the questionnaires are done so commonly we conduct questionnaires uh, in our research purposes the questionnaires we prepare and distribute it to students or the participants of a particular study and we can collect hospital records in case of case control study in case control study or any other studies usually we conduct interviews so that is all about collection of data now we go to the presentation of data how do we present data so we can use tabular columns and graphical methods tabular column is the data we present in tables it can be simple or complex table in graphical it is graphs it can be for quantitative data and qualitative data so data classification i have mentioned in my previous video in types of variables so quantitative data is nothing but a data with value qualitative is without any particular value it's like eye color of uh, the categories of eye color like blue brown black uh, gender gender classification like male female uh, that is qualitative data uh, quantitative means um, quantitative data is like with quantity the height of a person weight of a person the blood sugar level uh, the hemoglobin level so all are coming under quantitative data so this is qualitative data so in quantitative data uh, we can use histogram frequency polygon frequency curve line chart normal curve we have already seen cumulative curve or scatter plot in qualitative data bar chart pictogram pie chart and map diagram can be used so it is like uh, how do we uh, perform a tabulation it's like how do we prepare a tables uh, the basic principles we need to number it and title it properly with proper headings and uh, should not be very large and uh, types are simple and complex tables so simple table is like this just an example infant mortality rate in 2004 so on uh, left side we have various countries on right side infant mortality rate it's a very simple table uh, but a frequency distribution table it's like we need to make class interval and frequency because the if it is a very large group we need to divide the group into uh, class intervals that is convenient groups and the number of items 
that is frequency so class interval should not be very large or should not be very small and uh, number of classes should be uh, between 8 and 15 so all these are basic characteristics of a table so frequency table it's like uh, class intervals so divided the age category into different interval that is 0 to 4 5 to 9 10 to 14 15 to 19 20 to 24 and this is frequency like how many uh, people are belonging to each class interval so this is a little more uh, bigger uh, in class interval and frequency so that is about uh, tables now we have uh, charts charts uh, i mentioned you earlier it is for uh, qualitative data so this is quantitative data mm, quantitative data we use uh, histogram and qualitative data uh, we can use bar charts pictogram pie chart so it can be uh, tabular or graphical so graphical also we have to classification so let's see what is chart and diagrams why it is important because it gives information at a glance so it has a very powerful impact on imagination of people because it is very easy to uh, remember an image uh, rather than a table because uh, it is better retained in memory than at a particular table uh, but the problem with uh, this uh, charts and diagrams is uh, maybe some of the original data is lost when we are preparing charts and diagrams uh, so tables will give more information but a better representation will be done by these charts and diagrams so common uh, use diagrams are pie chart, simple multiple component bar graph, histogram, uh, frequency curve, ogive curve, scatter, line gram, pictogram. So bar charts are like this. So this is bar charts. So it is categorical data that is various categories are there like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is the different classes and number of students in each class. First standard, second, three, four, five, six so we are uh, representing a uh, one uh, each bar represent one attribute so this bar represents number of students in the class one class two class three okay so this is bar chart so the width of the bar and the graphs uh, between the bars sorry the gaps between the bars should be equal throughout and uh, it can be uh, vertical or horizontal and this is a this is the most important part the length of the bar is proportional to the magnitude or frequency of variable so you can see this is a little uh, height that is 70 it is less and this you can see it is length is very high and it represents 300 so the length of the bar is directly proportional to the magnitude or frequency of variable okay so the same uh, bar charts can be multiple if we are representing two variable in a single bar chart because we are representing population and land like this so various continents like asia europe so this is the population and this is the land available here we are representing only one variable in a single bar but here we are representing two variables in a single bar that is multiple bar chart because there will be a one sub attribute of variable component bar chart is like in a sing simple, uh, in a single bar, we are representing different categories in a vertical fashion. That is male and female, like Pakistan and uh, uh, USA, Sweden. How many female and uh, males are there? And it is a proportional, hundred percentage maximum. So we can see that uh, forty-eight percentage is male and remaining fifty-two will be female. Uh, in USA, it is like sixty and forty. Uh, in Sweden it is males are very less so that is component bar graph here we can uh, represent many categories on x-axis and they have further subcategories so the bars may be divided into parts and each part representing a certain item and the proportional to the magnitude of that particular item so this is component bar graph but multiple bar charts like uh, different attributes of a same variable okay so histogram is like a continuous 
bar graph without any ga gaps because in uh, bar chart we can see there is a gap between the each uh, variable or each attribute but in histogram there is no gap between this because it represent quantitative variable because it represents values here it represents different categories asia europe are different categories the variable is categorical variable but here we are representing the sugar uh, cholesterol level so that is a quantitative variable so when we have quantitative variable we can use histogram so quantitative continuous variable like age weight height blood pressure blood sugar can be expressed in this way that is histogram so the basic difference between histogram and bar chart is the variable we use to represent in bar chart it is categorical or categories here we are using continuous variable okay so you will understand better about variable uh, in the previous video that is types of variables so basic thing is quantitative variables is like numbers and call categorical or qualitative variable is like categories like asia like the continents or other variables so this is a continuous uh, histogram so if we mark the middle point of each histogram and connect it by a line it becomes frequency polygon okay so this we connect if we mark the central point it's not the same but if we connect like that we get frequency polygon so it is getting by joining the midpoint of histogram block so okay sorry this one s is missing here so uh, it is by joining the midpoints of histogram blocks so if you connect the midpoint and join by a line it becomes frequency polygon so normal curve we have already seen what is a normal curve and standard deviation and mean it is a bell-shaped curve and it is also known as Gaussian distribution so I'm not explaining in detail about the normal curve line diagram is nothing but we are representing using a line it is uh, showing the malaria cases reported throughout the uh, world ex uh, excluding African region so this is like cases on the y-axis this is like year so 1972 it is three cases 73 like three cases 74 four cases so it is x and y axis represented by line pie charts are like pie so we know how a pie looks like it will be 360 degree a total so we can represent two variables in or three four variables uh, by percentage and ultimately the entire percentage should be 100 percentage so we have seen this in our karyogram example karyogram will be a pie chart ultimately so we get the color of green sector by uh, adding all the remaining colors and subtracting it from 100 because the total percentage will be 100 or the degree will be 360 you know the entire circle will be 360 degree so it is indicating percentages of particular segment so it is like developed countries are 26 percentage and developing countries uh, are developing at 26 and uh, 74 developed countries world population so it is pie chart it looks like a pie and total will be 360 degree and a hundred percentage so we can uh, use this like uh, various factors the doctors went to Lahore this is like 50 percentage doctors retired this is like 25 percentage and the remaining are uh, doctors on leave or working doctors so four categories are expressed here but if we add all we get 100 percentage so each color represent a proportion of the 100 so total 100 and each will represent a certain percentage which belong to that particular category and all we add we get 100 percentage so pictogram is like representing using pictures so it is small pictures or symbols we are using so it is like how many cupcakes we eat per day so monday we six tuesday three wednesday four so instead of numbers we use uh, pictures so it is uh, like if you have big data so each cupcake is represented by six cupcakes so monday it is like if you are selling not eating if you are selling it it becomes one two three four five thirty cupcakes we are selling on monday tuesday it is three so 18 cupcakes 
so saturday 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so on saturday we are selling uh, 60 cupcakes because it's not easy to represent 60 here so we represent one cupcake as six cupcakes so it's another way of representing uh, data that is known as pictogram and scatter diagram it is like x and y axis uh, we have two continuous variables so it is usually used for correlation that is positive correlation it goes like upward if it is negative correlation it goes downward uh, so it is like uh, putting dots comparing one variable on the x-axis and another variable on y-axis x-axis and y-axis so each way dot represents the relationship between one variable on here and one variable here so that's all about uh, our data collection and presentation so we collect uh, data using interviews questionnaires hospital records and presentation by tabular or graphical graphical can be quantitative and qualitative uh, so we have seen uh, bar charts histogram pie charts and maps uh, bar charts and histograms are very confusing bar charts we use for qualitative data there will be gap between bar charts because it is representing different categories but quantitative data will be represented by histogram it will be continuous there will not be any gap between the vertical columns so that is the only confusing part others uh, are very easy like frequency polygon we connecting the middle points of histogram then frequency curve line charts normal curve we have seen scatter charts uh, pie chart uh, it's like our cardiogram pictogram it's like that cupcake that i have seen so it is a very uh, simple uh, portion of biostatistics it's like uh, how do we present our data uh, more uh, conveniently so that uh, the viewer can get the gist of the uh, or comprehensive uh, picture of a particular research or particular data collection okay so i'll come up with new topic in uh, dentistry and more thank you